Hello, my name is Edward Davis, and I'm a vertebrate paleontologist who studies extinct mammals, things like uh, pronghorn antelope with six horns and three-toed horses. And for my hobbies, I like to fix things and to make things. So if you found my channel because of uh, my shoe repairing videos, there's more of that content coming, so don't despair. But today I'm going to show you how I made a new cover for this hatchet. But just to wet your whistle, here's a couple of pictures of uh, upcoming shoe projects. I've got a pair of uh, Capto Oxfords that I'm resoling, and then I'm also going to resole my Bison moccasins again. I'm making a cover for this hatchet. This was a request of a person I met at the Fix-It Fair here in Eugene. So the Eugene Toolbox Project has a thing we do every month or two where we uh, we have a bunch of people who are handy and we fix things for folks. I usually go there and fix people's shoes, uh, but also fix other leather goods. I fixed a bunch of bags, uh, broken zippers, mended broken seams and things like that. Anyway, lady had a hatchet and she wanted to keep it in her car, but she didn't want it to cut everything up. And so she asked me to make a hatchet cover for her and I happily agreed to do the job. What I'm showing here is the process of making the pattern for it. This pattern making process is something I, I based on readings from Al Stolman. So he has a lot of stuff in his books on uh, how to make uh, leather cases that teach you how to make patterns. And so most of what I'm doing here is based on ideas from those books. I'll put a link in the description. So if you're not familiar with them, you can find them. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You're using the paper to stand in for the leather, and then you just have to remember to add a little bit of leeway so that when you're using the leather, which is thicker, uh, it still has space to accommodate. So I've, I've got one side of the pattern fixed. Now I've got to fold it over so I can, I can draw in the other side, and then I have to add a flap for the, the closure on the hatchet cover. I showed at the beginning, I was inspired by some uh, designs I saw on Amazon.com. I'll put a link to those as well if folks just want to buy a hatchet cover, but it's more fun to make your own. So anyway, once you've got the pattern uh, sort of started to sketch out here and you've got the two sides of the cover itself done, the next thing is to make the flap. So I left space on one side of it so that I could sketch in the flap. And here I'm closing the bottom up. Doesn't It needs to to have a nice even curve to it so it'll look aesthetically pleasing and also fit well around the hatchet head when you're done. You can see that I've left a lot of space on the pattern for the flap closure. So right now I'm trying to figure out how far down it needs to go to make, make sense in the closure. And then uh, I try a couple of different ways to draw the a nice clean semicircle for the closure and end up just freehanding it. So like the snow seal can's too small. I try drawing a nice semicircle with the compass, but that doesn't really get me there. So I end up having to freehand it. I got the two places it needs to connect to the pattern. And then I just sort of make a smooth curve with my eye. And like Jimmy DeResta says, if it, if it looks straight, it is straight. If it, if it looks curved right, then it is curved right. So there I got the pattern made at this point. Now I gotta find some leather to cut it out of. And I was thinking I would start with scraps if I could use just some leftover pieces, that'd be best. But I ended up having to, to pull out one of my uh, hides. I think this is a four to five ounce leather, tan, veg tan leather. I try to buy these at Tandy uh, on Black Friday because there's usually good sales. I, I boast buy most of my big hides on Black Friday every year. And then just save them up. It doesn't really go bad as long as you keep it in good conditions. Yep. So I'm using my scratch hole to mark out the pattern here. You can see I flipped it from the way I originally started because I actually ended up wanting it to go the other way. And now I'm starting to cut out the, the marked pattern from the leather. And what I realized, oh yeah, I have to sharpen up my um, box cutter here. Those are disposable blades, but they will go longer if you sharpen them. And in fact, you can often sharpen them just a little bit of work sharper than they come uh, from the factory. But one of the things I realized here is I needed to leave extra on the end of the pattern so that I would have space to accommodate the thickness of the leather. So that's why you see that I'm not cutting along the line on this edge. If I had it to do over again, the next one of these I do, I would actually leave that space on the other side of the pattern. And in fact, I marked that on the pattern in just a minute. Now I'm cutting out a little piece here for the welt. So I didn't wanna just have the hatchet 
edge right up against the stitching on the inside. I wanted to add uh, an extra layer of leather so that I could have the, um, some protection for the stitching. And then I'm, I very quickly cut out a piece for the strap so it can go on a belt if you wanted to. The person I was making it for, she didn't want it to go on a belt. It's just going to be in her car, but I thought it would be a useful feature to have. Now you can see I'm cutting out the shape of the axe from the welt. Another thing you'll notice is I cut it on the whole radius, but later on when I've got it fit together, it, the axe won't come out because it curves back in at the top, the welt does. So I end up having to cut that straight. I'll point it back out when I get to that point. Just neatening up the edges where I cut before I glue it all together. Uh, and I, I like to use I like to use old magazines, Tandy catalogs, New York Times magazine, whatever got lying around to uh, to protect my bench from the glue, the contact cement. I use barge contact cement, in case you're wondering. And you can see I was setting a timer. I like to go 20 minutes. I let it sit for 20 minutes. And usually the garage is warm enough. The 20 minutes is adequate for the barge to set up. While the contact cement was setting on the welt and the the uh, hatchet cover itself, I went ahead and marked the spot for the, the first snap. I'm going to mark the second snap once it's all together and I can get it exactly where I need it to be, but this one will be inside. It'll be hard to set once it's put together, so I need to go ahead and set it now. So the spot marked using the hatchet to actually cut out the hole. Got the snap setter here. It's worth it if you're going to do more than one or two snaps. It's worth it to go ahead and buy some kind of a snap setter. It's just it makes them much more consistent, and you'd waste fewer snaps, and it's it's just easier and nicer. So they make them at all different price points, but I would say it's good to get something like this. If you're really handy, you can convert an arbor press to use the the anvils for the snap sets, and then you have to buy the press itself. But I'm not that handy. I didn't make one myself. Okay, again, while the contact cement setting up, I'm going to go ahead and continue to work. I don't need the contact cement to set the the loop for the belt. I can just hold it in place where I want it, clamp it down with the sewing machine, and then sew. I'm still figuring out how to get photos and videos while I do this, so you can see my hands in the way of the foot for a lot of these early shots. Sorry about that. I went ahead and did a double line of stitching on the bottom and the top of the belt loop so it would just have uh, some extra security. You don't really want your hatchet to come flying off of your belt if you're out hiking or something. Or I mean you could use it to strap it to your backpack too. Either way you don't want it coming loose. And then it's just a simple matter of holding it back over. That's oh, another thing I learned from Al Stolman is if you're going to put a belt loop on, you don't want to just sew it flat on the top and bottom. You actually want to have that top part curve over because uh, that'll set the leather up to have the stresses on it in a way that will uh, keep it from pulling apart. So you can see how uh, instead of just putting a flat strap there, I've actually got it folded around. That way both the top and the bottom are getting pulled up. And, uh, and so it's putting stress on the stitches in a way that will uh, help keep them together. Yep, so you can see time's up. I actually only waited 15 minutes this time because it was warm enough in the garage. And so if you really want contact cement to work right, you have to hit it with a hammer or the back end of a hatchet to set it up correctly. You have to really set it. If you have a press, you can put it you know, in the press and, and do that, but the hammer is adequate or the hatchet. And this is where I'm having to modify the welt a little bit so that it's easy to get the hatchet out. Just, so if you're making one of these yourself, remember that you have to have space for the hatchet head to slide back out. Okay, getting everything tight where I want it and clipping it together. I'm going to mark it so I can go ahead and glue it. I decided I was going to glue this before sewing it just to make it a little bit stronger. So you could, in theory, just glue this, and the glue is good enough to really hold everything together. Here's where I'm marking on my pattern so that if I make one of these again, um, I'll know to cut long on the, uh, the non-flap side. That makes the proportions easier to control. Anyway, the contact cement's good enough that if you set this up right, you know, it would, it would hold for a long time without uh, any problems, without any additional fasteners. You can see on the, um, the, the pattern that I was basing this on, the model that I found on Amazon, 
they used uh, copper rivets to hold everything together, which would be faster than sewing it, but um, I don't think it looks as good. I don't know if it'd be actually faster than using the sewing machine. The copper rivets would take longer than that. It'd be faster than hand sewing it, but slower than the sewing machine. Here I'm cutting the end of the welt and everything up to make it all uh, even. And then to make it look nice, I get out my little uh, burnisher or sanding tool. And then I just sand that end. For a little project like this, this is good enough. Bigger stuff, I can take them to my 2x72 belt sander. But you can see that you just got to get everything evened up. And I go around the rest of it and get all the edges nice. I didn't actually burnish these edges. In the end, I felt like a, a rustic look was fine. The, the intention with this project was to keep it uh, simple and, and relatively inexpensive. And burnishing, it just takes a lot of time. Uh, the price point for this project was $20. And so that was uh, that was a too low a price point to go burnishing all the edges. But I did go ahead and, and round the edges. I'll help them wear a little bit better. And if I was smart, I would have rounded some of these edges before everything was put together, because uh, you can see how difficult it is to go through and, and use the beveler on the parts that are curved around now. So if I do it again, I'll, I'll make sure to bevel those before I glue it. Here you go. You can actually see the, the needle better now. I'll figure this out. This is speeded up to four times speed, so you know, I was going pretty slow here to try to make sure that I kept it at the right distance. Also, I'm uh, still kind of a beginner with the sewing machine, so I can't just blitz through projects the way some folks can. I, eventually I'll get there. Practice makes perfect, right? And I got the top snap set. And uh, I didn't show this on screen, but I also went through and, and sharpened the hatchet for her too. It's actually uh, pretty dangerously sharp now. And there you go. The whole project uh, without the sharpening took about an hour. Uh, I think I also spent about an hour sharpening. I just, I hadn't sharpened a hatchet before, so I had a little bit of learning to do about geometry and stuff. I think it came out pretty good. If you enjoy this uh, video, please give me a like. Give me a comment down below if you uh, have some ideas about how I could do this differently, better maybe next time. And uh, uh, please subscribe if you're interested in seeing more content like this, or if you're uh, hoping to see those shoe videos as they come out, uh, go ahead and uh, ring the bell so that you'll get notified when the shoe videos are up. Hoping to get those done by the end of January. All these things depend, of course, on my paleontology work too. So if you want to hear about paleontology stuff, send a comment there too. Let me know. I'll add paleontology factoids in the future videos. Thanks.